Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org, and on this episode of HeadFi TV, I'm going to introduce you to two of my new girlfriends, Layla and Angie, with whom I'm cheating on my other girlfriend, Roxanne, with. And we're going to tell you more about these gals on this episode of HeadFi TV. I think it's fair to say that when it comes to taking chances and innovating in terms of acoustic design, that is, what goes on inside the earpieces, Jerry Harvey of Jerry Harvey Audio, or JH Audio, pushes the hardest. To the best of my knowledge, Jerry was the first to do dual stacked armature drivers, as in dual low, dual mid, dual high configurations. To the best of my knowledge, he was the first to do quad stacked armatures too. In fact, he was recently granted a patent for his invention of the dual high frequency canal phone system. Jerry was the first to implement active crossovers for in-ear monitors and is the inventor on the patent on that. With his JH3A, he developed what he calls the inverse active crossover, for which I believe he has a patent pending. He has a notice of allowance on his patent for the Freak Phase Waveguide, which was designed to time and phase align driver output in multi-armature in-ears. Again, I can't think of anyone in the industry who pushes acoustic engineering development with in-ears to the degree that Jerry Harvey has in the past several years. Well, he's doing it again, introducing two new Universal Fit in-ear monitor models today in partnership with Astel and Kern that will be the latest additions to his Siren Series line. Now, for those of you not familiar with the Siren Series, it's a growing family of in-ears from Jerry Harvey Audio that are named after famous rock songs about women. The first Siren was the Roxanne, introduced late last year, and the JH Audio flagship. Well, the flagship until today, anyway. Because later today, again, two new models in the Siren series are being unveiled at the Portable Audio Festival in Tokyo. The first is Layla, obviously named after the legendary 70s song of the same name by Eric Clapton and his band Derek and the Dominoes. The Layla today moves into the flagship position in the JH Audio lineup ahead of the Roxanne. The second new Siren series model being introduced today is the Angie, named after the big 70s hit of the same name by the Rolling Stones. Again, both models are being introduced now as universal fit in-ear models in partnership with and available exclusively through Astell & Kern and Astell & Kern's dealers and distributors worldwide. The custom versions of both Layla and Angie will be available directly from JH Audio and JH Audio's dealers and distributors worldwide beginning in the first quarter of 2015. So let's start with the Layla. Again, the Layla is the new JH Audio flagship model. Like the Roxanne, the Layla has 12 drivers per ear in a three-way configuration, quad low, quad mid, and quad high drivers in each ear. Also like Roxanne, the Layla has adjustable base, achieved by using dual attenuators in line with the cable. Other than that, though, the Layla is a different girl altogether. Layla has no drivers in common with Roxanne. Her drivers are all new. The crossovers, which I'll get to shortly, are also all new. In other words, the two have no internals in common. With the Layla, there are different armatures, different crossovers, different dampening. From the outset, the Layla was given a different mission than any previous Jerry Harvey Audio in-ear monitor. All of the in-ear models made by JH Audio, up to and including the Roxanne, were designed to be live performance pieces, stage monitors. Of course, their signatures have found and will continue to find great favor among audio enthusiasts, too. The Layla, on the other hand, was not designed primarily as a live performance monitor, but as JH Audio's first purpose-built reference-slash-mastering studio monitor. Now, with all the other JH Audio in-ears I have, including the Roxanne, there's a little warmth in low mids, a sort of Jerry Harvey signature. To me, when its bass is turned all the way down, the Roxanne is one of my reference headphones, regardless of form factor. With its bass all the way down, the Roxanne has a neutralish sound signature, enough so that I've used them for monitoring during Chesky Records recording sessions. With the Layla, however, Jerry was shooting for truly flat response with the controls dialed down. That is flat from end to end. Now to accomplish what he was after with the Layla, Jerry designed all new drivers. These new drivers required steeper crossover slopes than usual to achieve the goal of voicing a reference mastering monitor. And so the Layla and the Angie, which I'll get to in a minute, are, to the best of my knowledge, the first in-ear monitors to use the steeper, more complex fourth-order type crossovers. So once again, Jerry Harvey comes to market with still another first with the use of more sophisticated fourth-order crossovers. Compared to the Roxanne and owing to its new drivers and steeper crossovers, the Layla has what I would call much more truly usable versatility than the Roxanne. Whereas the Roxanne with its bass all the way down is once again neutral-ish to my ears, the Layla sounds dead flat. In fact, with its bass all the way down, the Layla is so flat that it will likely be dry for some. And dry is something that to my ears the Roxanne never is or can be, even with its bass all the way down. 
To be clear, I don't mean this in any way as a negative with the Layla. In fact, I really like having the option for that leaner, flatter, drier presence, if only for use as a sonic palette cleanser. Again, to me, the Layla is a much more versatile piece though. Whereas I keep my Roxanne's bass all the way down most of the time, with the occasional bass knob turned to no higher than around 10 o'clock, I actually occasionally turn the Layla's bass all the way up, and hardly ever turn it all the way down. In its lowest position, again, it's just a bit dry and lean for me for general listening. What I love though is that with a slight turn, the leaner, dry character simply transforms into something else completely with, again, usable bass with the potentiometer wide open. Yeah. It's certainly bassier than neutral with the bass knob wide open, but it's cleaner and tauter than the Roxanne wide open. Frankly, the Roxanne's bass wide open is a place I never go. It's simply too much, too heavy when it's turned all the way up, probably even for the bassier bass heads among us. Again, not so with the Layla. The Layla's entire bass knob range is usable for me, and unlike the Roxanne, again, I rarely have it down all the way. I find myself right around 12 o'clock on the bass knob controls uh, with the Layla, and occasionally just a hair down from there and occasionally even up from there. Again, it's just super versatile that way. As far as imaging goes, the Layla is at least as good as the Roxanne, might even have a slight advantage in my early assessment of it. I suspect it's the use of freak phase and the efforts JH Audio puts into time and phase correctness that results in this. I never thought it possible that I'd like a universal fit monitor more than my custom Roxanne, but the Layla Universal Fit does it. It's absolutely fantastic and again, fantastically versatile. I'll wait until the customs are available and order a custom Layla eventually, but I hope Jerry Harvey Audio will let me borrow this Universal Fit pair of Laylas until then. As for the Angie, it is truly the Layla's little sister, using the same drivers. However, whereas the Layla has a trio of quad drivers for a total of 12 drivers per ear, the Angie has a dual low, dual mid, quad high configuration for a total of eight drivers per ear. The Angie certainly has more in common in terms of its sound signature with the Layla than it does any other Jerry Harvey piece. Versus the Layla though, the Angie isn't as capable of richness throughout its adjustment range, which can occasionally bring a bit more focus on vocals, for example. It's very versatile, yes, but not at the level of versatility that the Layla has. With the bass turned all the way down, the Angie, like the Layla, is at least a tad too dry for me for general listening, and so I rarely ever listen to it there. Again, like the Layla though, turning it up transforms it, wiping out the dryness and leanness. With its lower total bass output versus the Layla, and even less relative to the Roxanne, I actually find myself going well past the halfway point most of the time on the Angie's bass control, and I actually turn it all the way up on occasion. Again, this is something I would never ever do on the Roxanne. It's not just the Angie's lower total bass output, but also the way the steeper crossovers and the drivers work that give it this versatility. The Angie is a great taste of Layla and might be the best value in the entire Jerry Harvey lineup right now, which you'll understand in a moment when I get to their pricing. I've spent more time with Layla than the Angie, and I know for certain I'd take the Layla over my Roxanne. I want to spend more time with the Angie to compare to my Roxanne to see how I feel about those two compared. If you're a studio type though, I'd imagine that you'd find either the Layla or the Angie more suited than the Roxanne to mix down on in the studio. As for criticisms of the Layla and Angie, I have absolutely no quibbles at all with their sound signatures at all. None. My only issue with these pieces is that, like the Roxanne Universal Fit, they are on the larger side for Universal Fit earphones. I have both the custom and Universal Fit Roxannes here at the moment, and the custom definitely sits more flush in my ear than the Universal Roxanne, which sticks out a bit. Like the Roxanne Universal, both the Layla and Angie Universal Fit models also stick out a bit, with the Layla being slightly larger than the Angie. I can easily get a good fit with them, but neither is as comfortable to wear as my custom Roxanne is when laying my head down on its side when I'm wearing the pieces. Like the Roxanne Universal Fit, the Layla and the Angie are handcrafted one at a time. There's very little difference between how JH Audio builds a custom and how they build the Universals. I believe every bit of them are all made in the USA. The Layla shells are solid, hand laid up carbon fiber with titanium bezels, hand burnt with a torch to give the titanium unique color variations. As the titanium bezel wears, it may change colors for even more individuality. The Layla comes with a custom full carbon fiber and black aluminum carrying case and is priced at $2,499. The Angie is hand shaped and 3D printed. This prototype that I have here has a red chrome finish, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the same finish in production. The Angie has a carbon fiber insert and a machined aluminum bezel. It comes with a machined aluminum laser engraved red case, which you see here, and I think it's going to be priced at $999. Now both the Layla and the Angie come with a standard 3.5mm terminated cable and a balanced 4-pole 2.5mm terminated cable to take advantage of the balanced outputs of Astell & Kern's latest generation of high-res portable players which are absolutely fantastic and that you see here. 
With the Roxanne Universal priced at $1,299, you have to jump up to $2,499 to clearly better it with the Layla, and that's a big jump. For those who have the budget for that kind of price, I have a feeling the Layla will be very popular even after a short audition. Again, I'm going for the Layla in custom form when that becomes available. But at $999, the Angie is again perhaps the strongest value of all the JH pieces and I actually can't think right now of a universal at this price that can match its total performance. I predict the Angie may end up being Jerry Harvey Audio's biggest seller in time. So that's the Layla and the Angie. Two new innovative universal fit in-ear monitors by Jerry Harvey Audio in partnership with Astell and Kern. You saw them here on HeadFi First and I hope you enjoyed this episode of HeadFi TV. Thanks for watching and see you soon.